Hello, welcome to Double Strike Recap. Today, I'm gonna review Western action movie from 2016, The Magnificent Seven. Spoilers ahead. It is remake of the 1960 film of the same name with the background in 1879, begins in the small town of Rose Creek. This town is being terrorized by land baron Bartholomew Bogue accompanied by an army of hired guns. The townsfolk meet in the church to discuss what they ought to do to protect their land and families from Bogue. The man himself enters the church with some of his armed men and he steps up before everyone else. Bogue argues that there is little profit in the land that makes up Rose Creek, so he intends to return within three weeks to see that the town has turned up more profit. When the residents denounce him at the town church, Bogue has the church torched. As the people evacuate, Matthew Cullen calls Bogue out and asks what kind of man he is to harm innocent people. Bogue pissed off and responds by shooting Matthew dead in front of his wife Emma, leading to a number of other citizens being killed by Bogue's men in front of their families. Before leaving, Bogue orders his men to leave the bodies where they lay so that the townspeople can get a good look at them for the next few days. In another town, Sam Chisholm, a famous U.S. Marshal rides his horse into town. He enters a saloon, facing unwelcome looks from the people who see him and then asks the bartender about an outlaw that goes by the name of Powder Dan, the man had brutally killed a man and his son and stole his horse. The other men in the saloon draw their weapons on Chisholm, but he is quick with his gun and gets all of the men without skipping a beat. He then shoots the bartender dead, knowing that this is Powder Dan. Chisholm orders the people to fetch the sheriff, and all of them run out of the place terrified, except for one man, a gambler named Josh Faraday. Chisholm proved to the citizens that Powder Dan was an outlaw. In the other hand, Faraday is caught up by two brothers that feel he cheated them in a card game. The brothers bring Faraday outside of town to kill him. Faraday distracts them with a card trick, which ends with him shooting one of the brothers dead and shooting the other one in the ear. As Chisholm rides away, he is approached by Emma and her associate Teddy Q. She explains the town's situation with Bogue and their desperation in finding someone who can help. Emma and Teddy give Chisholm all the money they have, and when she mentions Bogue's name, Chisholm seemed interested and he agreed. Chilsom then starts recruit men to accompany him against Bogue. Chisholm, Emma, and Teddy watched Faraday tries to pick up his horse from a stable master. Chisholm then offers to pay for Faraday's horse in exchange for Faraday joining their cause. He agrees. Chisholm then instructs Faraday to travel to Volcano Springs to find a man by the name of Goodnight Robichaux. The other hand, Faraday and Teddy arrive at Volcano Springs to witness a gunfight between two men. The first man believes that the second, Billy Rocks, didn't fairly win, so he demands a legit gunfight. As they are set to fire, Billy instead grabs his hairpin and throws it into the other man's chest, killing him. Robichaux goes around collecting every man's bet. One man refuses until he learns Robichaux's name, and then pays double out of fear. Robichaux has a reputation for being a notorious sharpshooter. Faraday and Teddy approach the two men as Robichaux gets a shave to discuss them joining the team. The two agree after learning it's a paid job. Chisholm and Emma come across a house with a dead man inside. They find Vasquez, a Mexican outlaw with $500 bounty on his head because of murder. He offers the outlaw a chance to avoid being captured by Chisholm in exchange for joining the team. Vasquez complies. After they were reunited, they went on a journey searching for a tracker named Jack Horn. An ex-soldier who ever killed 300 Comanches by himself. They speak to two outlaw brothers on Horn's whereabouts. The two said that they had killed Jack. Suddenly, Jack show up and struck one brother in the chest with a hatchet, and the other is shot dead. He then takes the hatchet. Chisholm asks him to join their team, but Horn just walks away. On the road back to town, the group encounters a Comanche named Red Harvest. Chisholm, knowing a little Comanche, speaks to him and asks for his help. Red drops his kill on the ground and cuts out one of its organs to offer it to Chisholm. He reluctantly bites into the organ to prove his loyalty, so Red agrees to join. Horn then joins after tracking the group down. The group returns to Rose Creek and confronted by some of Bogue's men in the middle of town. 
One of the men, McCann, calls upon one of the shooters standing on the roof of a building but read faster. He already got to him, and drops the man's body off the roof. The team, except Robichaux, then start fighting against Bogue's men. Red fires his arrows, Horn chucks his hatchets, Billy stabs several men, and the rest fire their guns at the villains. Robichaux is more hesitant in shooting, allowing McCann to get away on his horse. Faraday wonder why he didn't shoot the guy, Billy shows up and tells him the gun is not working. Chisholm orders the sheriff to run back to Bogue in Sacramento and tell him that Chisholm is waiting for him. Since the ride between Rose Creek and Sacramento takes about a week until Bogue returns with his army. The seven round up the townsfolk with Emma's help to inspire them to fight for their town and their families. Yet many of them skeptical and chooses to leave the city because afraid on Bo's army. The men begin to train the townsfolk in using weapons. Billy instructs them on using knives, while Faraday and Robichaux teach them to shoot. The inexperienced citizens don't get it immediately, but they pick up and do better. Emma manages to be a better shot after having learned from her father as a child. They also attacks Bogue's gold mine, picking up explosives and offering the workers to join them fighting him. Next scene Bogue receives the message from the sheriff, then Bogue kills the messenger, literally. He begins to concoct his plan of attack. The seven bond together in town at night through a meal, drinks, and some laughter. This brings them closer to the townsfolk as well, giving them more of a personal reason to fight. However, the seven and the townsfolk prepare for the arrival of Bogue and his army. Traps are laid out and people are at their stations. Red Rushton tells Chisholm that Bogue and his army is on the way to the city. At night, Robichaux becomes distressed over the thought of more killing, as he is haunted by the lives he's taken over the years. He tells Chisholm he wants no part of this and he decides to ride away into the night before the battle. Emma offers to take Robichaux's place. As Bogue's hired men charge in on their horses, Bogue and a handful of his men watch from a distance. The men ride by a line of pinwheels set up by Horn, who then detonates some explosives that throw the men off their horses. The people begin shooting at Bogue's men, while the men fire back. Vasquez shoots McCann dead right into a coffin. Bogue retaliates by having his men fire a Gatling gun into town, mowing down countless people. The women and children are evacuated to a safer area. The defensive line collapses, and Robichaux returns to join the battle, warning the others just as Bogue and his remaining men start firing a Gatling gun from a hill leading into the town, killing many of the townspeople and even their own mercenaries. Bogue's own Comanche, Denali, rides into town. Horn tries to fight him, but Denali takes him out with four arrows. Denali follows Emma into the saloon and tries to kill her when she shoots at him but has no bullets. Red shows up and fights Denali, ending with Red stabbing him and pushing him over a balcony. Faraday is wounded by McCann, who is killed by Vasquez, tells Chisholm to have to take out the Gatling gun, and says Chisholm owes him cover, the two rush out, Faraday grabs a horse and begins a long sweeping charge toward the machine gun. Robichaux and Billy provide covering fire from the steeple. The gun crew is bemused as the lone attacker gets closer, they shoot at him. The Gatling gun is fired a second time. Billy and Robichaux are shot dead in the steeple. Faraday sustains multiple gunshot wounds before falling on his knees before a group of Bogue's men. He pulls out a cigar and puts it in his mouth. One of the men lights it for him before aiming the gun at Faraday. He slumps over, but then rises and shows a burning stick of dynamite. Faraday throws it at the men and it blows up in a huge explosion. Only Bogue and two henchmen are left. Chisholm confronts them and easily guns down the two remaining mercenaries, before disarming Bogue by blasting the gun out of his hand. A wounded Bogue retreats into the church, where Chisholm reveals that his family was lynched in 1867 by ex-Confederate soldiers, who were hired by Bogue to drive homesteaders out of Kansas. Raping and murdering Chisholm's mother and sisters in the process. Chisholm has a neck scar, he had barely survived a lynching. After imploring Bogue to repent, Chisholm begins to garrot him, Bogue tries to pull a hidden small caliber, top break revolver, but Emma shoots him dead. Despite the massive destruction and untold lives lost, 
The surviving citizens are thankful to Chisholm, Vasquez, and Red. The people thank them all as they ride out of town. The townspeople return to Rose Creek and thank Chisholm, Vasquez, and Red Harvest for their service as they ride off. Faraday, Robichaux, Billy, and Horn are buried near the town and honored as heroes. Emma, in voiceover narration, reflects fondly on the noble sacrifice that made them magnificent. If you enjoy this video, don't forget to subscribe, turn on the notification and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.